Welcome to this week's Prestatian online service from Prestatian Church in Wales. Our theme this week is going to the dogs. I nearly made it who let the dogs out just so I could use this. Who let the dogs out? And you never know, I might still use it. Anyway, that's all based from a passage uh, from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, which we shall hear shortly. After our first hymn, which was itself a, ra a rather big hit in the charts in the 1970s, uh, with two different versions, but we'll just sing along with Amazing Grace. Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. 
and her daughter was healed at that moment. Thank you, Lucy, for reading to us there. It sounds to me like Jesus didn't really want to respond to the woman and the disciples seemed to want to shoo her away. But she persisted, pleaded, argued until Jesus accepted her logic, her faith and granted her request. This reminded me of the passage of the widow and the judge where the widow has to keep coming back to an unjust judge, pleading her case until eventually she wears him down and he hears and he grants her her request. And the outcome of that particular story is that we hear that God is so much more willing to hear and respond to our requests than that unjust judge was, because God is just and on our side. So this story is about persistence too. Often when we pray, sometimes it might seem that once is enough. But when it comes to some of the the big things like, well, COVID-19 or the economy picking back up again or people with difficult health conditions or those with sort of mental health issues or addictions, they're not just things you pray for once and then walk away. God requires us to engage with him so that we are pleading, urging, asking his insight and his perception on those things as well. And this story uh, shows us that the, the mother is a wonderful intercessor. She comes to Jesus with the needs of another, her daughter, and she is dogged in her determination to get a response from Jesus. Though referring to people as dogs isn't a good thing, is it really? Not in our culture. That's a bit degrading and prejudiced. And at the time it was rather a racial slur, which although not politically correct today, is still understood. I know several people who relate far better to dogs than they do to humans. Even the author Mark Twain is quoted as saying, heaven goes by favour. If it went by merit, you would stay out and your dog would get in. So there's much more we can learn from the loyalty and faithfulness of dogs. The dogs in this passage were around the master's table, so they were not wild and savage, ill-kept or ill-treated. Putting ourselves in the story, many of us would be Gentiles, non-Jews, so we wouldn't have been people that Jesus was initially seeking. But we have been feeding on the scraps of blessing that have fallen down through the ages. We've had our eyes open to those passages that include all who respond, whatever nationality, creed or colour. And we have gotten to know the Saviour who will heal even us and all who we might bring to him. In St Paul's writings, he helps us to realise that there's no longer any distinction between Jew or Greek or Gentile, slave or free, rich or poor. We all fall short and can't by merit gain God's favour. It's purely by grace, the free gift of God to the unworthy, to any of us that we might know his forgiveness, his blessing and his promise. And then as our faith matures, we realise that God is faithful and dependable, that he keeps his promises so that we can have confidence about one day sitting at the table and sharing a heavenly meal with him. We're no longer slaves or dogs, but brothers and sisters. Going to the dogs can have the meaning of being sent to them. So who are those in our time who are not yet sat at the table with him, off at the margins, wanting to be nearer to Jesus, but not allowing themselves to get that close? Who is it that we could go to and reassure them that they are certainly not 
too far gone or too broken or too corrupted, too set in their ways, too anything to not be loved by Jesus or included in the gift of his life given on the cross. Every dog has its day, so maybe today is ours. And hopefully one day soon, it may be the day for those you are called to reach. Only by grace can we enter. Only by grace can we stand. Not by our human endeavor, but by the blood of the Lamb. Into your presence you call us, you call us to come. Into your presence you draw us, and now by your grace we come. Now by your grace we come. Reflecting now upon some of those themes and ideas from my talk. Lord, feed us from your table, not just the scraps, even though that is all we might deserve. Lord, help us to grow in grace, in love, in peace and in joy. Teach us your ways, that we might be humble, obedient and responsive to your prompting. May we know your unconditional love and be secure in our total trust in you. Bring us the healing that we need in body, mind and spirit. Reaffirm our identities as children of God, co-heirs of the kingdom with Christ. Send us to those you know that we might reach for you. 
so that they can know your provision, your purpose and your peace too. Maybe that should lead into a saying about the dogs of war. Well, it's been VJ75 weekend, remembering the war and the surrender of the Japanese, bringing a halt to the fighting that had continued for months after that in Europe. There was a small gathering at the main war memorial and we held a two minute silence and we prayed together. Lord God, we thank you for this commemoration of those who died, but also the celebration of the victory that they achieved. Thank you that we can still celebrate much of what was gained, relative stability, our global identity, our shared history, a united hope for ongoing peace. Please, Father God, may we today have fresh optimism for the world, renewed expectations of working together in good ways, and strengthened determination to avoid future wars of any kind. If you're watching this on Sunday the 16th of August, or certainly in the morning, then the big news is that we have a live pet service and all age service this afternoon at 2.30 at the Church of the Holy Spirit, which is in Victoria Road, opposite the entrance to the Tower Gardens estate. Now we hope that that'll be outside, weather permitting, so that uh, up to 30 people are then allowed to attend. However, if the weather isn't kind, we shall be inside and the capacity is somewhat reduced because of social distancing. So if you're able to come in household groups or social bubbles, that does help expand the capacity, capacity a little bit. Next Saturday, the 22nd of August, will be the Big Church Socially Distant Sponsored Walk, which some may have been put off because it's 18 to 19 miles walking to St Asaph and back on a circular route. But don't be put off by that because you don't have to do it all. My encouragement to you is choose to do a little bit, maybe just the bit along the prom maybe just to the end of your road and back, but whatever's a challenge for you, but realistic for you, you too can be part of this day. We can't walk it together as we might have done in the past, but we can be together on that day, walking uh, in this socially distanced way to raise a little bit of money uh, for church funds, whichever church you're connected to. And if you just need to walk to the end of your garden path and back a bit like Captain Tom well that's fine and I'd be delighted to know that you're involved taking part in that way too. The next live service will be on Sunday the 6th of September also at 2.30 in the afternoon and that'll be at Christchurch the parish church and it'll be a service of the word drawing material from evening prayer and also a little Welsh to make it our Welsh Heritage Service. But before that this week there is the opportunity to join in the coffee and chat, that sort of fellowship online via the medium of Zoom and also using Zoom at the 20th of the month comes is coming up so at 20, 20, 20 past 8 on Thursday the 20th there'll be a prayer meeting just for 20 minutes on Zoom so do join that if you can I'll circulate the links for both of those but if you haven't received it do contact the office. If uh, you know people who don't receive these services online or uh, who haven't had the recent DVD version please let me know and I'll make sure that they can keep up to date with the pop around which just precedes the service you've seen and the DVD which enables people to see it in their own homes. So now let's turn all of these issues to prayer. Heavenly Father, we do lift before you the work of your church, the live services, the sponsored walk, and these ongoing online offerings. Lord, please use each of them to your praise and glory. And Lord, would you touch hearts, would you unite us, would you enable us to fulfil our God-given potential? Father, we lift before you all that's going on in the world at this time. The fiasco of the exam results, and so for the pupils and the teachers caught up in an impossible situation. 
Lord, please would you enable those students with plans to be able to proceed. Father, the aftermath of the explosion in Beirut is still something that's just devastating with the high level of homelessness and the need that's left in Lebanon. Please, Lord, would you motivate and mobilise the resources, the people, that they might receive the care and the support they need. Lord, we lift before you the deterioration of freedoms and democratic rights in Hong Kong, a people we've prayed for for so long, and now it seems that their, uh, their freedom is being denied them. Lord, we also add into that the political issues distancing China from the USA and from much of Europe. Please, Lord, would you enable us to live better, work more cooperatively and be more considerate of nation and nation uh, with one another. We pray for the ongoing worldwide ups and downs of a world struck by COVID-19. Father, please help us to be sensible. Please help us to be um, considerate of one another. Uh, but Lord, please, would you help us to regain a certain degree of normality? Father, the families and the recovering victims from the train crash in Scotland, that's also on our hearts. Please, Lord, would you help there to be some understanding of, of how that happened and all that can be done to prevent it happening uh, any further. Lord, please, would you bring comfort and strength to those who are recovering or grieving. Lord, may we be better intercessors, those who bring the needs of others to you. Those on our list today, we want to name and plead their needs before you. So for Barbara and Derek, Lord, please would you give them more time, more quality time, and help Barbara to continue to feel well. For Marilyn and Ken, Lord, thank you for the care that's supporting them. Please also, Lord, may their time together be really happy and close. And for Brenda and David, Lord, we're rejoicing that they're back together again. Please, Lord, keep them safe and may they continue to grow in love and in your care. We pray also for Janice, for Sue, for Mary, for Joan and for Elsie. Lord, wrap your loving arms around each one and continue to work healing in their lives, we pray. We also lift before you Janet Hunt, Catherine Parsons and baby Jasmine, all part of uh, Calvin and Leslie's family. Lord, please continue to work and minister to their varying needs. And also for Sarah Wilkie, Lord. Uh, for Rona Cartledge and Lillian Hanetti, fairly recent attenders at Christchurch just before lockdown, and also Tom and Maureen, who have been with us uh, for a good many years. Please, Lord, bring your renewed resource of healing into each of their lives. Lord, you know the difficulties that many face. Some have swollen legs, some have difficulty with their eyes, some have difficulty with their hearing. So, Lord, for, for them, for these people, Matthew and Betty and Joan and Janet, Jean and Eilis and Malcolm, Gwyneth and Phil, Lillian, Maury, Lord, please would you help each one of them and others on our hearts and minds with their particular needs at this time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Next week will be an all-age service based on rainbows and the story of Noah's Ark. So do join us again then for some more animals. Keep safe, keep praying, and keep close to Jesus.